I'm Katie, and I'm an educator at the Virginia Museum of Contemporary Art. Have you heard the word contemporary before? Contemporary means new or now. At the museum, we show the work of living artists and we change our galleries out every couple of months so that we can always show new things. Art can help us learn about the world around us. Artists take inspiration from things like math, science, history, geography, and so many other things. Today we're going to learn about animals and their habitats and then take a look at the work of past Virginia Mocha artist Andrea Dezzo, who creates these amazing imaginary habitats and the animals that live in them. Then I'm going to give some instructions for doing an art making activity that incorporates what we learned about animals and their habitats for you to create your own imaginary creature. I bet that you have a favorite animal. Maybe it's something like a cat or a dog. Maybe your favorite animal is something like an octopus or a snake or something really rare, like a northern hairy wombat. All of these animals live in something called a habitat. A habitat is where something lives and grows. For example, a shark lives in the ocean. How many different habitats can you think of? Grab some paper and something to write with. I want you to pause the video for as long as you need to write down as many different habitats as you can think of. If you're working with a friend, see who can come up with the most. Ready? Go! There are so many different types of habitats, so I'm only going to name a few. The forest, the arctic, the desert, the grasslands, and the mountains are five different types of terrestrial habitats or habitats on land. Aquatic habitats, water habitats, can include things like tide pools, rivers, oceans, lakes, swamps, wetlands. An animal who has gills to breathe in the ocean is not going to be happy or able to survive in the forest. An animal like a polar bear who has all that thick blubber to keep him warm in the Arctic is gonna overheat in the desert. These are physical adaptations or changes to their physical body that help them survive. We have physical adaptations too. We walk upright so that we can use our arms to carry things and we have thumbs to use tools. A behavioral adaptation is a change in how we act to survive. For example, a possum plays dead when she's scared. She falls over and she slows her breathing way down. She slows her heart rate down. She even makes herself smell really, really bad, right? These are all different ways that she's acting to survive. Take out your pen and paper again and get ready to pause the video. I want you to write down five behaviors that humans have that make us different from animals. Ready? Go. Humans have many behaviors that make us different from animals. We invent and use tools, we have complex language, we go to school to learn and pass on knowledge, we even farm, right? One thing that we do that other animals don't is we create art. We do this to share ideas, to think more deeply, and of course, to entertain ourselves. Let's look at the work of Andrea Dezzo. Andrea Dezzo is an artist and illustrator who creates dreamlike landscapes filled with imaginary creatures. She grew up in Transylvania, Romania, and now lives in Massachusetts. She exhibited a series of small tunnel books and a large installation built specifically for our gallery for, at Virginia Mocha in 2015. Her creatures live in habitats that resemble underwater worlds, forests, caves, imaginary planets. This tunnel book, Gentle Beast Hiding Behind Molten Lava, shows a small creature tucked inside a dark world. Let's look at the physical adaptations that this animal has. It has massive eyes, which help an animal see better at night, so we might guess that it's nocturnal. We can see a little hand with long fingers, much like ours. Fingers help us grip and climb, which might mean that this animal could live in trees or use tools. This critter also has huge ears. What do you think it's listening for? Dezo has surrounded this little creature with lava in both the background and the foreground. Some animals in real life, like lava crickets, Hawaiian bats, and tarsiers, live on and even in volcanoes. Perhaps this animal has a physical adaptation like them, like being able to survive intense heat. Or maybe they have a behavioral adaptation, 
like knowing exactly where and how to hide for safety. If your habitat had lava in it, what would you do to survive or even thrive? Why might you choose to live in a habitat filled with lava? Now we're going to move on to an art making activity. We're going to learn what we use today about animal adaptations in their habitats to create our own one of a kind animal. We've created a printable instruction sheet with these directions, but I'm also going to talk it through to you step by step. The first thing I want you to do is start brainstorming to think about what your animal is going to look like. Let's start with the habitat. Where does it live? Is it aquatic? Is it terrestrial? Are there a lot of plants there for it to hide in and eat? Or is it going to have to camouflage some other way, like with the sand of the desert or with the snow in the Arctic? Write down what physical adaptations that your animal has. Does it have a beak? Does it have fingers? Can it camouflage? Does it have special eyes to see at night? What is your animal covered with? Warm fur? Lightweight feathers? Scales? Does it live in a shell? As you move through the included brainstorming worksheet, thinking about all of these things, remember to connect them back to the habitats that they live in. If your animal eats meat, remember that there's going to need to be other animals in that habitat for it to hunt. If your animal flies, think about where your animal might build its shelter. Once you finish brainstorming, gather art materials. Artists use anything that inspire them, so look around your house. You might look for things like paint, markers, colored pencils, collage materials like magazines or ribbons or glitter. You could use something like Play-Doh. You could use modeling clay. You could even look for toys that you already have like Legos, stuffed animals, building blocks, anything that you can find that excites you. Use your art materials to create a landscape with a foreground, a middle ground, and background. Remember to include things like plants and other natural things like mountains, rivers, water sources, rocks, anything that might be there. You can even include other animals that your animal eats. Now it's time to add your imaginary creature. Think about how big it is, what color it is, and how it acts. When you're finished with your artwork, find somebody to share it with. Tell them all about your animal and the habitat that you have created. You can even have your grown up share it with us on social media by tagging us at, at Virginia Mocha or hashtag Virginia Mocha at home. Thank you for joining us.